Hi, I'm Greg Garcia here at Angler's All. Tonight we're going to tie a steelhead fly called the Greenbutt Skunk. Greenbutt Skunk goes back 50 years. It was tied originally by a gentleman by the name of Dan Callahan. Uh, what he did at the time was his favorite fly was a North Umpqua skunk pattern. And he got his hands on some new material. It was a bright green fluorescent uh, chartreuse chenille. And what he did was he put it on the butt of this skunk. And it quickly became a very popular pattern within the first year. Tonight I'm going to tie a version of that. It's going to be a little bit more modern with some floss in the back as the tag. And it's how we sell it here at the shop. And how we've all kind of become known as uh, knowing the green butt skunk. So, hope you enjoy. And uh, thank you for watching. Okay, green butt skunk. Let's get started on this. So there's a couple ways that one can approach this. Uh, we can mount the wing reverse style first um, or before we tie the rest of the fly. The other way we can do this is mount the wing at the very end. I found for myself that if I mount the wing first, it's a little bit more durable. Uh, especially if you maybe cast like I do and sometimes uh, blow your anchors and fly ends up in the trees or in the rocks behind you, which shouldn't happen, but it does make this fly a little bit more durable. So we'll do it this way, and we can certainly, you can certainly tie it the other way, and I'll kind of talk about that towards the end. The wing, we're going to use tonight some calf tail, white calf tail. Try to find one that's very straight, and uh, you know, all you're going to do is go in here and uh, pull some of this hair perpendicular to the, the tailbone here and cut a piece out. What I like to do is clean it, make sure there's no uh, small little pieces in there, and then I'm going to stack this, make sure all the tips are nice and even. Pull it out of the stacker, as you can see there, tips are nice and straight. I'm going to estimate how long I want this tail, since I'm going to be tying this or this wing first. So what I'm, I'm looking here is that I want the wing to come back to maybe just shy of the back of the bend um, for all of its proportions. Then I also want it long enough so that when I mount it here, it won't end up being too short. So I got my measurements. I kind of have my finger, front fingernail here as a measurement just to get started. I'm going to slide this in between the return eye. As you can see here, there's a second little piece of return coming back down the shank. And at this point, I'm going to give it some white thread. I'm going to start with white. And I'm just going to get this started on the hook. As you can see, that folds that right over. Kind of estimated where my head is going to be on this fly. By the time I pull that back, that should come back out of this eye might even bring it back just a pinch, but I think that's going to be good. Um, let's take our measurement and again make sure that it's not sticking out too far backwards. Gonna lengthen it just a pinch. Once I feel good about that, I'm going to secure this in place and also tie that thread in so it's not going to go anywhere. At this point, I can clip off my tag, come in here, get all the butt sections clipped out so it's not in the fly. Material coming on. 
and then I'm just going to continue backwards, closing up that return eye. So everything's nice and tight. Now we're going to put in a piece of uh, French tinsel. This is uh, silver small. This will be part of our tag. Then I'm also going to use this material as the ribbing as well. I'm going to tie most of these materials on the bottom of the hook. And so what I'm going to do is put this tinsel behind the thread and then bring it up over the top. Basically, right there, that's tied in with one wrap of thread. Not real secure, but it's, it's, it's on. Then I'm going to come back down. I'm going to pull this French tinsel straight down. And I'm going to do nice little touch wraps all the way back, keeping a nice smooth body. And tension on that thread, or the French tinsel, so it's not wobbling on the top side of the hook or on the side. I want everything on the bottom side. Keep this fly nice and clean. So I come close to the um, hook point. I'm going to kind of look at this and I'm going to stop about right there because at this point this hook starts to go down. That's where I want to stop this. And then I'm going to come forward about four wraps, grab my tensile. First wrap is on the hook. That's going to keep that from sliding off the back side. Then I'm going to come forward about two more wraps. Tie it off. And then to keep this diameter of this fly the same all the way up, I'm going to wrap this thread French tinsel on the bottom side again. I'm going to cut it to length so it's right at the back of this little return. And then I'm just going to carefully bring that all the way up, keeping it from rolling on the side. There we go. So as you can see there, the diameter of this hook has not changed at all. Now at this point, I'm going to come straight back to the first part of my tag here. Again, little touch wraps all the way back. Take your time, you don't have to be fast. Now I'm ready to tie in a little tail. Um, Golden Crest is what we're going to use on the uh, Green Butt Skunk. It's been dyed red. You're just going to go in here at the bottom. You can clip it off the bottom. You can see there's some little clip marks that I've done before. Or you can come up here on the top side, find a feather that you like and then clip that out. Once we have gotten that, what I'm going to do is make a measurement. Usually on this, and it comes back. We're going to kind of match the reverse curvature of the hook bend and the length as well. So right there, that might be just a pinch long. So I'm just kind of eyeballing that in my fingers and uh, my fingertip there. I'm also going to cut out what I don't need. And open this all up and let all those little fibers come out. I found that if you don't do that, what will happen is this will have a tendency to really splay on you. And... Uh, a little hard to work with. So there's my measurement. I'm going to grab it right on top. 
My first wrap is going to be a little pinch wrap. Let the weight of the bobbin bring it straight down. And I'm just going to let that sit there for a moment. Kind of find its, its place. If uh, those feathers have splayed out a little bit, and we can certainly redo that. Let's try that one more time. Make sure it's on top of the hook. And then what I am going to do here is I'm going to make two more wraps forward before I tighten this up. And now I'm going to tighten it. And there's that little tail mounted right on top of the hook. Like that. Okay. Again, I'm going to come forward. Tie all of this in to keep the body of this fly the same diameter all the way up to this return section. Tighten this up just a pinch more. Okay. All right. Now at this point, I'm going to tie in some floss and finish up this tag. For this I'm using some unifloss in chartreuse and when you pull it off the spool you can see it's pretty darn ropey. So it's a single strand so what I'm going to do just to show you here I'm going to cut a piece off and then I'm just going to start from the middle and work my finger down in both directions and flatten it out and you'll notice that this starts to split on us which is what we want. We want it nice and flat and then once it splits and the way to accomplish this again is to start from the middle and work your way out. I'm going to grab this split it and then work my way down. Let me just kind of do this a little bit more make sure that's going to come apart. Of course there's a little static electricity. And we can split that it's nice and even and it's going to be a lot easier to, to make this next wrap, next part of this. So at this point I'm going to put that and mount it the same way I did on the oval tinsel and I'm going to tie it in at the bottom. I'm going to come back. Now these tags aren't super long they're less than half the length of the body. But I'm going to start it about halfway and then I'm going to start wrapping backwards doing little touch wraps. I'm also using white thread at this point so that this floss doesn't get really dull. If I use black thread and underneath this and then once this fly is wet that floss would get really dull. Some tires will say I definitely want to put in some silver tensile underneath this. To uh, make that even more shiny and more glossy. So I'm going to tie that off nice and tight and then again I'm going to come forward and tie that up to that tag return eye. And that makes that floss even a little bit more durable too because it's not going to come unbuttoned uh, and come apart. 
this point I'm going to change my thread color to black. Just going to grab my black thread, trap the white thread, start coming and just tie that off. Put that away. Don't have to whip finish it, get it out of the way. Just retie on and clip off your tags. Okay, I'm going to go back to this silver tinsel and just drop on the floor. So I'll cut another piece out. Again, underneath the thread, wrap it around, tie it in, pull it so it's not uh, sticking out the front of the eye. Also, if I start with a bunch of this hanging out the front, it makes it a little harder to pull this tensile through the thread. This tensile has a um, texture to it, and it's easy to unzip it and it comes apart. Now at this point, I'm just going to tie this tinsel in on the bottom of the hook. I'm going to come back. And usually it's about, um, you know, a third. And then we're going to have about two-thirds of material for the rest of the body up front. So this tag is a little shorter um, than the actual body itself. We're going to use some black trilobal dubbing. Any kind of uh, seal substitute, or if you had seal, that would work nicely as well. A little hard for us to get that down here. This is a coarse dubbing. It's got a lot of. Uh, shininess to it. I'm just going to start this on. And usually I always tell everybody a little bit of dubbing on a lot of thread. Kind of kind of go for a little coarser look here. And at this point we can dub the rest of this body as thick and as big as you'd like it. This is going to be a little bit more of a low water, clear water fly. Usually we're fishing these in uh, late summer into the fall, into October. The water is usually super low and clear. I'm going to get about a, I don't know, maybe a six. Seven inch little noodle here going. It's probably out of the camera. And then what I'm going to do is just dub this for it. Oops. There we go. Keep tension. Got a lot of dubbing here, so I'm making big revolutions. Actually, not the most economic of turns, but have so much dubbing. Go forward. Keep in mind we're going to wrap some hackle on here. Then we're going to fold this back as the wing. So we want to have enough space there to accomplish that. I think that looks good. If you want this a little bushier, you can get a little dubbing tool. This is a new little dubbing tool from Oakwa Feather Merchants, a Tiemco retractable dubbing brush. I really like. Reach into your bag, those little wire ends can sure dig into your fingers. 
I can uh, pick that out. Some guys like to pick it at the end. I don't like running the uh, possibility of tearing my French tensile. When you're done, you don't want this. You can just spin that forward and boom, it goes away. All right, so back to the tensile. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna wrap this forward about at least four turns. Four to five turns, I think, is uh, will work here. There's five. I'm going to turn that, tie that off the bottom of the hook. Okay, we've tied off that tinsel. And uh, like I said, four to five wraps is acceptable in the uh, sound fly spay world. Uh, no less, no more is kind of their, their motto there. Now the hackle we're going to use is some, uh, tonight is some American saddle hackle. Uh, this is from a hen. It is uh, pretty webby, which is nice for this fly. Give it a nice soft hackle appearance. What I like to do is uh, prep this. Pull off all this stuff we're not going to use, maybe even cut off the back end of this stem. Then I'm going to come up in here and I'm going to tie this in at the tip. We want these, this hackle to kind of sweep back to the tip of the point, sometimes a little bit shorter will be fine. It's all up to you, it's your fly. Um, there's no real right or bad reason. What I like to do is stroke it. We can kind of backwards. We can kind of hand fold this backwards so that basically all the hackle is going to be on one side of this stem. And I'm going to tie this in by the tip, as I said. I'm going to come forward maybe three wraps. Pull this back, the tip backwards. And then I'm going to tie three wraps back just to make sure, you know, everything is nicely tied in because um, we're going to be pulling on this hackle pretty hard. Now I'm just going to bring my thread forward to the end here and I can come in, cut this tip out. You can break it off if you'd like. Every time I do that, I always pull it out so I just will cut it. I'm going to grab the butt section of this feather with a uh, hackle plier. Just kind of something to hold on to. And you can come in here, wet your fingers if you'd like. Again, make sure these feathers are folded backwards. And I'm going to make a wrap. Usually if you get one wrap going, you're in pretty good shape. And then, as you can see here, this feather has a natural curve, the way these barbs come off. So that's the direction I'm going to tie this in. Doesn't take a lot, maybe three, four wraps. Should do it. Let's re grab this. I'm just going to grab it by my hand. Bring this forward. Got a few tips that are coming forward. That's all right. Tie this off. To, let's give this one more wrap. So three wraps total. Come in here, clip this off. Can come in, stroke everything back. Give yourself a couple more wraps just to make sure that's tied in. Now at this point, all I'm going to do is grab this wing, pull it straight back, and wrap it into place. Tie it down. 
to kind of get it started, I'm going to jump right to the front of the eye, and I'm going to go straight up. So I've made a base with my thread right at the bottom. And as I come backwards, I've basically I've created a dam at the bottom. So this shouldn't slip off. If I just started right at the back, what's going to happen is I'll make a two, three wraps and everything's going to fall down to the eye. Come back to where the hackle, my thread is to where my hackle is tied in, my wing is secured backwards nicely. Then all I have to do is whip finish this. I don't need to whip finish all the way up. I'm going to start at the back here. That's where the majority of all my thread is for my taper. Do about three wraps. That's done. Make sure my thread is nice and tight. Clip it off. Then the last thing I'm going to do is come in with my bodkin, which I have right here. I'm using some uh, hardest hole penetrator. I like this stuff. It's got a nice, uh, it's nice and thin. Get a little bit here on my bodkin. Then I'm just gonna work my way around the head. And what I'll ultimately do is I'll put one coat on, let this dry. And then I'm going to come back and do about two more coats. And when you're all done, you're going to have a nicely varnished head. It's going to be glossy black. And uh, it's going to cover up any of those little thread wraps. It will not be seen. You have a nice little nice little head there and that's it that's the uh, green butt skunk as we know it today great little fly fun beautiful in the water has a lot of movement to it and a lot of uh, attractiveness to it and uh, hope you guys enjoy the video and tie a few of these up and uh, play around with colors you don't have to stick to this uh, scheme Thanks again.